Hello, it's Denise from Women Beyond a Certain Age. Now I'm laughing because I just mangled Betty Ann's last name, so I have to reintroduce her. But our guest today is Betty Ann Quirino, who I met at Food and Wine. Do you remember that, Betty, years ago? Yes. Food and Wine Conference. That's yes. the first 20, time I saw you. 2016, May 2016. Oh, for God's sakes, Betty. And I don't remember what I did yesterday. I'm glad you can remember the year. Thank you for joining us today. Hello. Hello. I'm so happy to be here, Denise Well, and Cindy. I, I'm thrilled you're here. Now, I need people to know something. When I met you, I don't know where you were in your blogging career, but I know you had started your blog. So tell us about what <laughs> you've had a huge career and I'm, we're gonna talk about that. Before your blog, you've been a journalist. You're an award-winning storyteller. I mean, it goes on and on. Your say the name of your blog now because you renamed it. We rebranded and I my blog is now called The Kirino Kitchen. I love it. And what was it called before that? Before that, it was AsianInAmericaMag.com. Gotcha. And I founded that in 2010. Oh, well, my God. That's fantastic. I went to your website this morning, and I'm so impressed. It was easy to navigate. I want people to know. I know that you are so cute because you, you used to ask me once or twice about food styling. But all the photographs on your website now look wonderful. They're representative of your recipes. I know you also are a contributor to Simply Recipes. Isn't that right? I mean, I read your website, honey, from cover to cover this morning, and I was so impressed. And that's why I'm thrilled you're a guest today, because you're going to talk, talk. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got here if you would. And then you're going to tell us some recipes that you think that people could master in their own kitchen. I know that Filipino food, I know a little bit about it, Betty Ann, not near enough, which is why I'm thrilled you're here today. So talk to us about how you started on this journey. Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on Women Beyond a Certain Age. Um, this is a wonderful podcast that I listen to every week when you have um, a new guest. I am um, an author, a journalist, a food writer. Uh, I've been writing all my life since I was a little girl and I've been cooking for as long as um, I can remember. Uh, I was brought into the kitchen by my mother when I could reach the kitchen counter. And my father was a farmer. I grew up in, I was born and raised in the Philippines, in Tarlac province, which is about 100 miles uh, north of Manila, the capital. It was a very small agricultural town back then. It's a city now, but when I was growing up, it was very rural. And my, my life centered on... Um, the, the produce that my father uh, grew on the farm. And that, that was the life I knew. And then we moved to, you know, my whole life, went through my whole life. And then when we moved here to America over 30 years ago uh, with my husband, Elpie, and our two little sons then, um, Tim and Constante. We call him Toby. Um, how I started my blog? Well, I've been a writer for a long time. Okay. So uh, here and there, uh, here in the States, I chose not to work full time because I was raising children. Yes. So yes. I did uh, part time jobs as a researcher and then I taught for Berlitz. I taught Spanish and English at Berlitz. Um, I did um, business research jobs, I did freelance writing. And then it was time for my sons to go to college. And I had been very, very afraid that once they leave home, they will just eat, keep eating junk food and everything that I did raising them will be erased. <laughs> so I started writing down recipes that they could bring with them when they went to college. And first, my oldest son. And I was writing down recipes. This is how the blog started. I was writing down recipes on a yellow pad. And the boy said, 
this was around 2009, the boy said, Mom, what are you doing? I'm writing recipes, they said, for you. And Tim said, nobody, nobody writes anymore, Mom. Everything's digital. You have to put it online. And I said, well, I don't know how to do that. I'm very tech challenged. So the boy said, okay, we'll teach you how to do a blog. Oh, I love that. What is a blog? I said, so they explained. It's a website. It's a web blog. You, you, you put things, you type things on it and you upload your picture. You know, every, every terminology they introduced to me was alien. So they took me step by step with, their, with a lot of patience. And they both said, we're only going to do this once. You have to do it by yourself. Because we're leaving, Mom. We're leaving the house now. When so, you, I tell you, interrupt you for one minute. You're so cute because you told me this when I met you. I th I complimented you. I'd seen a video or something, and you said to me, "My sons," and you told me, Denise, they're teaching me how to do it. And you know what? I think that's as important. It's like te it, they're teaching you that as you were teaching them the family recipes. I think that that is the dearest thing I've ever heard. Okay. And that they helped you. They helped you so much. And they should, after all the years you fed them. <laughs> <laughs> well, grudgingly, I have to add. They were not patient. And the, the name of the blog just evolved. We were sitting around the dinner table and Tim was typing on his laptop. And he said, well, what name do you want? I'm about to buy a domain. Oh, oh what? I didn't even know you needed a name. So it just it just occurred to me. Well, we're we're Filipinos, we're Asians. Well, how about Asian in America? Because I wasn't even sure what I was going to write about. You know, I was a writer, so I wasn't sure was I going to write about books, about travel, about me, about the, the boys, about raising kids in the suburbs. You know, everything was not clear. I just needed them to eat well and to cook well and, and to have a good life. Uh, that was my, that's always been my goal. So the boys, you know, it, it evolved and I learned alone by myself how to up, take pictures, how to upload. And, and this is why your food styling book has been my Bible. I'm so glad. I, you know, I, I don't know what I would have done without it. You know what that was, Cindy's in my, that really was our goal. Betty Ann. And, you know, you write books for different reasons. You don't, you know that, having published three books already of your own and working on number four. But that was the goal. And it's been the most satisfying thing of, in my career for me. I, I'm not speaking for Cindy, but the fact that the book really has helped people, and we hear that all the time, is a reward. It's a reward. I'm very grateful. Thank you for saying that. Well, you know, I, I, did, I did have an understanding of food styling. Because when we live in the Philippines, uh, I work for an advertising agency, Sachi. Gosh. Sachi Advertising. I was a copywriter. And when we will do fo photo shoots or, or shoots uh, live and, and still uh, photos of the food, there was always a food stylist. And I noticed the food stylist was always chosen by the photographer. I noticed that. Yes. The photographer always wanted a food stylist he could get along with. And I always wondered about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I learned little techniques, like how to, you know, where to put the daisy. Yes. Inside <laughs> a plate of pancakes. <laughs> and how to make the, the syrup cascade down, down pancakes. You know, I learned little things like that. But now that I was doing my own blog, I, I didn't know how to do it. So I had to... You know, I needed a resource, and I think yours is the best in the industry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honey, I have to tell you, when we first started teaching food styling workshops, now this is 15 years ago or something like that, we had a huge influx of women from the Philippines, okay? They just, I mean, Cindy knows, and they became our dear friends, and they all kept saying, you have to come to the Philippines. Our favorite was a young woman wanted to, and I just tell you this because she wanted to, she eventually did open her own bakery and stuff, but she wanted to stay and work with us. 
So Betty and I can tell you, so she stayed. Now she came, her family had a little money. So as long, the longer she stayed, I mean, a couple of months passed, she was engaged and she had on a gorgeous big diamond ring. And I kept saying, Meek, don't you have to go home? You know, and, and she'd say, oh, my mother-in-law keeps bugging me. And she would say, my Chinese mother-in-law to be wants me to come home. And I'd say to my husband every morning, we loved Mika. We didn't want to lose her. But I kept, I was concerned about her engagement. <laughs> and I'd say to her, Mika, if I see a little old Chinese lady trying to crawl over my fence, you have to go home. But she was the darlingest, one of our favorite interns. And she taught us a few things about the Philippines. And that's why hearing you now, it makes me, doesn't it? I know Cindy feels the same way. It makes me miss her because your sense of family and um, dedication is, is evident in the Philippines. And it's lovely to hear you talk about your family. Yeah. So I interrupted you. Now we have to go back to where you were. So you get your blog going. And then yes. and you've taught yourself. And then I taught myself. And then I, I realized I can't do this alone. The boys are gone. Although my husband was a big help, LP, you've met him. Yes. He's in IT, he's a tech person. So, you know, the three boys, uh, my son Tim, used to work for Facebook as product designer. Uh, Toby, my youngest son, is a content editor for a branding agency. And LP works in IT for um, healthcare, for the healthcare industry. I'm the only one who's technically challenged. And, you know, I, co I cook the meals and that's it. You know, that's my role in life, to nurture them. Uh, when it comes to uploading pictures, it, it, it took a long time for me to learn how to take a photograph and then attach it to the, to the computer. Yes. I didn't even know. I didn't know you needed a cable to do that. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Since I've retired, Betty Ann, I, do, I had to learn things because Cindy came every day and just took care of them. And I let, let her take care of them. I didn't say things like, oh, please help me learn <laughs> Cindy and teach me. I like said, you need to do this next. You need to do this next. So I have had to learn a lot of things myself. And you know what? Sometimes I do something and I think it's a big deal. And sometimes I think I'm a moron. But either way, I'm trying to learn. Yes. It's the only way. Otherwise, you might as well go live in a cave. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, uh, what I did was to imitate. I imitated my sons and Tim, my oldest, was very active on social media. So when he was on Twitter, I signed up for Twitter. He was on Facebook. I signed up for Facebook. You know, whatever they did, I followed, much to their annoyance. <laughs> I followed them. And then after after trying to build my, my platform of friends on social media, I realized I needed to meet people in person, these people I'm talking to online, like Jenny Field, uh, you, uh, Nancy McDermott, you know, Monica Bidet has been yes. a great inspiration. And then I realized that I need to attend conferences. So I did start doing that, and I met you, and I met Jenny, and I met, you know, all our friends. Um, so, you know, that was all a mix, like a recipe. You need several things to make a recipe delicious. And it's true. It was the way I did it. And I, I did, I, 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 I'll be honest, I did everything organically by myself because uh, I, I couldn't afford to hire somebody. I hear you. And, and do it because where will I get the money to do that? This is a self. That's right. You know, my, my myself, my self-entrepreneurial thing. Um, and little by little, my, my husband has, has been very supportive. He for, for Christmas and birthday gifts and holiday gifts, he'd buy me a camera. He'd buy me lighting equipment. He, will, he even, bought, when we incorporated as an LLC, he, you know, that was one of the gifts for me. Very and, smart. And very smart. They made the boys. They did that. You know, they bought me little dishes for food styling and, and tablecloths and things that would help me. So that has been a big help. So, you know, um, I'm proud of my sons and what they've become. And I, I think they're proud of me. Denise. Of course. You know, I have to tell you, Betty, this, Betty, and this is something that is a constant theme in the guests that we have on Women Beyond a Certain Age. 
most of the women that are guests are at least in their 50s or older. Do you know what I mean? That's just who we relate to. That's whose stories we're interested in. So many women that are guests on this podcast, it's a second or third career, and it is entrepreneurial, just exactly what you're saying. So you're cobbling together your blog with your own inspiration, but with what you know, which is food. It's, you know what I mean? It couldn't be any smarter. It's genius. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Uh, and you know what? It's, it's, uh, Filipino food has been uh, a large part of my life. And I, and I learned it without really intending it to be the buzzword in my life. You know, I, I grew, I was born into it. I grew up with it. My father um, was a farmer by profession and it, he was a businessman as well. And his uh, his number one thing that he asked my mother always was, "We have to, you have to cook what I produce and what I planted in the farm and in the yard." So, so it was like that. We I I was assigned to pick the, to get the eggs every day when I was a little girl, um, and and they were from free range chickens, so they were brown eggs. So for like seven years, I, I thought all eggs were brown. <laughs> Until one day we went to this, a new supermarket and I and I saw white eggs. So I was scared. And I said, what happened to the eggs? Who washed them? <laughs> you know, that was my life. Uh, yeah. er, everything that my father grew was, he preferred that it was what my mother prepared for, the, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My mother cooked three fresh meals a day, every day. How did they do that? Betty and my mother did the same thing. And my father, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and my father came home for lunch and it was a hot lunch. Yes. And I look back now because I cook, I my husband takes care of his own breakfast. He usually eats leftovers for lunch. And then I do make, I try to make a fresh dinner almost every night. But you know what? I run out of ideas. I mean, I don't know how women have done this for 10,000 years with children because I run out of ideas. I, 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 I'm the same. But when looking back, I realized that ideas of my mother, what to cook, came from whatever was harvested. Today. Got it. So she was cooking in season a long time ago. I oh, mean, yeah. she was she cooking was farm to table. Farm to table. Or it was even, a, you know, before it was a buzzword. Yes. And you know, I'll be honest, uh, this was our way of life. Uh, I actually thought we were destitute. <laughs> I thought we didn't have money because everything came from the yard and the farm, the chickens and the eggs. And, you know, and if there was a party, there was slaughter a cow or, you know, or get things from the coconut tree. And I always thought, and then I heard, would hear my my classmates talk about going to markets and buying and i'm thinking well why are we not buying anything maybe we don't have money as a little girl since my father owned small grocery stores i was were, uh, very aware of grocery stores betty ann but my mother cooked the same thing we ate healthy healthy food my grandfather had a garden and he had some land so we didn't get any of the fast food coming out in the 50s and 60s. Yes. I saw yes. Kool-Aid or I saw snowballs or Hostess cupcakes. And I was so envious of my friends. Mm. You know what I mean? And I my, mother, I, my mother had packed us a lunch with a fresh leg of lamb sandwich and like two pieces of fruit. And it had no value on a schoolyard whatsoever. Yes. Oh, I know that. I, know I wanted that. chips. I wanted sweets. I wanted a hostess apple pie. Yeah, I wanted soda. Yeah. I got fruit juice in the lunchbox, my Barbie lunchbox. Oh, how f fabulous. Yeah, no, I hear you. It was, and we didn't know how lucky we were, but I understand. I felt the same way. As I've gotten older and I think of the gorgeous meals that my mother cooked over and over again, I'm... I'm kind of overwhelmed at what a great job she did. Most of how hard she worked. That's all. How hard she worked. Well, you know, when we when we first moved to the here to the United States um, in the early '90s, I was cooking everything from scratch. Yes, like every single thing because that was the way of life uh, I was brought into. And uh, 
it, it was be- early 90s we didn't have the internet yet yeah so i and we live in suburban new jersey north north new jersey i live in flanders uh which is uh you know something like 60 miles from new york so there are no chinatowns here i got it <laughs> so it was difficult at first with no online shopping and i had to go to an american supermarket and i i always had to think what well, not that I don't know how to cook, I know, but you know, I, I used to yearn for the familiar cooking that we you used didn't to. have the right ingredient. Correct. Yes, but I, you know, I I thought very long and hard, and I realized there are some Filipino dishes that don't need a Filipino store, okay. like adobo. You know, basic chicken adobo, which only needs vinegar and garlic. And it's famous. That's yes. a famous Filipino dish. Yes. Now, when we put broadcast you and put you up, I know you sent us one or two recipes, Marianne. Talk about those. Is one of them the chicken adobo? Didn't I see a gorgeous flan that you sent us that could also be made? I'm thinking of people that are listening. Now, the only reason I ever tried to make a Filipino dish was because I worked with a young Filipino woman who cooked for us do you know what i mean and showed us a few things <laughs> but but otherwise i don't know that much so what recipes do you think that you are going to give us that people could tackle well i i have shared with you um for holiday dishes which you know the, the holidays are coming up and there'll be a lot of family get-togethers there's always a noodle dish at the center of the table so i shared with you pancit and I shared an all vegetable uh, pancit so tanghon because uh, there's more of a clamor these days for wholesome all vegetable dishes. Yes. And you may or may not have vegetarian friends drop by, so you know I, I've taken away that 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 worry for you, for whoever is going to cook this. You can prepare this wholesome all vegetable pancit noodle dish without having to worry about you know, the general um, preferences of people. It's a people, it's a crowd pleaser. Yes. It's only a stir fry dish. It sounds wonderful. I have to tell you, I had lunch with my niece, one of my nieces about two weeks ago. And all of a sudden she said to me, well, you know, I'm going vegan. And when she said it to me, of course, I was probably eating a big plate of prime rib or something. (laughs) Betty, but, and I'm thrilled for her. And she's, health conscious she's been an athlete all her life but i said are you going to be a true vegan or might you eat a little fish and chicken and then yes that's what she was thinking of so really more of a vegetarian but better yet when i was walking home i thought my father who was a butcher his entire life my grandfather was a butcher i thought they would have just said, what are you talking about? But in, it, you're right. And what a great recipe you're giving us. I think in big family celebrations, you have everybody at the table now. Do you know what I mean? I can see young people coming home from college and they want vegetarian dishes. Or I can see an older person who's cutting back yeah. on their, mit, you know, their meat intake mm-hmm. eating that dish. That sounds delicious. And can I make that dish? Yes, you can. You can go to your supermarket. You know, in your neighborhood, it doesn't even need to be a um, an ethnic store, and you can find uh, the basic uh, ingredients that I I put there. It's the basic stir. You start by stir frying the vegetables. Got it. And I have there, uh, you know, the the usual blessed trinity: the garlic, onions, and the celery. And then you have um, carrots and cabbage and green beans. Lovely. And then I have the cellophane noodles, the transparent cellophane noodles, which major supermarkets have them already. Or you can buy them on Amazon, which if you're on Prime, it comes tomorrow. You know, it's there on your doorstep tomorrow. And and you just stir fry it all together. And um, even if you don't have fish sauce, which is the flavor profile of this vegetable pancit, even if you don't have fish sauce, You can substitute with lemons. Got it. For the citrus uh, flavor. That's it. 
we have an Asian market, several Asian markets up here in Ventura. Yes, in California. I, yeah. But I have to tell you, when you said that, uh, Betty Ann, I know that a lot of people don't care for Amazon. I will say honestly that I shop from Amazon all the time because exactly what you just said, to be able to get things delivered, especially when COVID happened. Oh, yeah. Things delivered like that. You know what I buy just all the time for Amazon? They have the Italian lady fingers that are a little bit crunchy that you make oh, the best ones one. that you make for tiramisu and i had oh, gone to oh yes yeah. and you can order them and it's a big package and they make the best tiramisu so i'm an amazon shopper so if people can get noodles people can probably get the fish sauce off amazon too yes if they want. I, I get red boat uh which is a vietnamese i believe uh um patis or fish sauce also, if you don't like Amazon, for those who are listening, you, there's also DoorDash. Yes, okay. And they can get stuff from the neighborhood supermarket for you. And, you know, it's not... Th this is why I shared the vegetable pancit sotanghon uh, recipe with you and your readers and listeners. It's because it's a, it's a very user-friendly and forgiving recipe. I have a question for you. Betty Ann, and we didn't discuss this beforehand, but if people don't know, the Philippines was a stopping place, I know for, I mean, we're going back hundreds of years. Doesn't the Philippines have a huge mixture of history of food? Oh, I mean, you, yes. yeah, you have Chinese, mm -hmm. Spanish, Portuguese. Correct. Yes, it's the Philippines, um, our food and our culture and our history has been influenced mainly by our colonizers. Uh, Got it. Spain colonized us for uh, more than 300 years. Got it. And then in the early, you know, from 1561, and then in the early 1900s, um, the United States purchased uh, the Philippines from Spain for, I believe, 20 million U.S. dollars. So, so um, uh, America gave us our infrastructure, our education, uh, our political system for 50 years we were a colony of the United States so this is why there's a lot of Spanish American uh, influences in our dishes and the names of our dishes and we also got influences from our neighboring countries in Asia yes. Japan, China, uh, Thailand Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia all of these you know, we share the same terroir, the same environmental and geographical uh, systems. So a lot of our foods and our fruits and our um, produce uh, and raw materials are um, similar. Got it. Do you see, I've been seeing it, that there is now a huge upsurge in Filipino food. Yes, I'm what? very happy about that. Yeah, I, I know I see it in magazines. I'm seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, not to make it a buzzword, <laughs> Betty Ann, but it is. I mean, I'm seeing for the first time major publication and websites talking about Filipino food. It's amazing. And it's yes. A, and I subscribed. You have a newsletter that deals with that. Isn't it the Asia in America? Isn't that the name of your, you know, what's, what's yours called? My, no. Well, my blog, my, my website is the Quirino Kitchen. Yes. Now. But you had, but I thought I, I signed up for a newsletter from you. Is that coming from your? Yes, maybe, oh, maybe that's the one. Yeah, I saw a new subscriber okay. sign up. So, so I, I want people to know when they go to your website, then they can sign up. Yeah, and I, I, mm -hmm. it, I signed up this morning and I have to tell you what, I went through some of your recipes. We're going to share some when we broadcast your podcast. They were excellent. Oh, Classics. I get it. Well, thank you. I mean, I tried to make it easier. Yes. For uh, housewives, young wives, homemakers, parents, uh, even just you know anybody who is curious about Filipino food, who wants to learn about it, or somebody who is a pro who just wants to affirm yes. what he or she knows. And and I I'd like to appeal to those who don't live in in the cities. Because I live in the suburbs and I've experienced that, the frustration of not finding the right ingredients when there was no internet. And I had to find a way to learn how to substitute 
and come up with the same flavors that I grew up with. I love it. I can't thank you enough. Oh. I, in case people don't know the history of the Philippines, you were able to encapsulate that in about a paragraph. It was, it was masterful. Now, so I want to thank Betty Ann Carino for being I, our guest thank today. Thank you. You have been, uh, you have taught me so much in a short period of time. We're asking Betty Ann, so look forward to it, to come back and do podcast number two, yes. because she is writing her fourth book, and it's a memoir about her mother's and her mother's recipes. So, and when you hear about it, I just think that you will, it's a fascinating story. Betty Ann, I cannot thank you enough. I thank you for your recipes. I hope people will go to your website, Q-I-R-I-N-O Kitchen, so that they can um, s sign up for a subscription to get recipes from you. Yes, it's a free subscription to my website, oh. the Kirino Kitchen. And exactly. uh, I and love it. If you want to reach Cindy or I, it's womenbeyond at iCloud.com. Send us messages. Many times people don't want to write their messages on the wall of the podcast, and I don't blame them. So they private message us, and that's perfectly fine, too. We love to answer your questions. So everyone, thank you, Betty Ann. And let me tell you this. You. I'm totally impressed with your website, and I feel like I learned something today. So I thank you so much for that. Oh, thank you. Well, I keep learning so much from you, too. Good. I hope so. Thank you. All right. Right when you get work, everyone. And thank you, Miss Cindy, who keeps, keeps this train on the tracks. And it's not that easy of a job, I might answer. Thank you, Betty Ann. We'll see you again. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.